I am freezing. I am shivering harder than Charlie Wrangle in an IRS audit. You can say that again. It is cold enough to freeze the nuts off my Prius. You own a Prius? Why did you buy that expensive ugly piece of crap? I am helping to save the world. You mean you actually still believe in the anthropogenic global warming hoax? You mean you do not believe in global warming? No, I did not say that. Over the past 4.5 billion years, the Earth has obviously gone through many natural cycles of warming and cooling. I just do not believe in the anthropogenic hoax part of global warming. How can you say that? Carbon dioxide levels are rising and global temperatures are rising too. Therefore man-made carbon dioxide is destroying the planet. That is faulty logic. Do you also believe that people holding umbrellas will cause it to rain? No, I do not. Well, that is the same logical construct. You are implying a causal relationship that does not exist. No. There is a causal relationship. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gases trap heat and that is why carbon dioxide is causing global warming. Do you happen to know how little atmospheric carbon dioxide there is? No. I do not. There is only 365 parts per million, which is a minuscule amount. Moreover, 93% of annual carbon dioxide emissions are naturally released from soil and water, so only about 7% of total annual carbon dioxide is from man-made sources. Accordingly, even if man-made carbon dioxide emissions were cut to zero, it would only reduce the minuscule amount of total carbon dioxide levels by a paltry 7%, which does not mean diddly squat. Well, maybe carbon dioxide is a very strong greenhouse gas that does not take much to cause a greenhouse effect? No, ignorant slut. The greenhouse effect of carbon dioxide is very small. Atomic absorption spectroscopy analysis shows that carbon dioxide is only capable of absorbing 7% of the infrared electromagnetic spectrum in the 15 micrometer frequency range, which means it only has a very weak greenhouse effect. Oh. Then what is the major greenhouse gas? Water vapor. Using the same atomic absorption spectroscopy analysis, the greenhouse gas effect of water vapor is about 850% stronger than carbon dioxide. Moreover, there is approximately 2,100,000% more water vapor in the atmosphere than carbon dioxide. You do the math. Accordingly, given the laws of physics, water vapor is the sole gas responsible for Earth's greenhouse effect and carbon dioxide is irrelevant. What about methane? I have heard scientists mention this greenhouse gas. Well, remember when I told you that carbon dioxide is measured in parts per million? Yes. Well, methane concentrations are in parts per billion. Any scientist that even mentions methane as a consequential greenhouse gas should lose his tenure and have you rolling on the floor laughing your frigging butt off. Methane gas causes farts, not global warming. If carbon dioxide and methane do not have a significant greenhouse effect, then why are carbon dioxide levels rising in tandem with global temperatures? That is a good question. The answer is outgassing. What is outgassing? Is this another fart joke? No. Outgassing is a chemical property of gases suspended in a medium, where more gas is released the warmer the medium holding the gas becomes. Accordingly, the warmer the earth gets, the more natural carbon dioxide is released from water and soil. So, rising carbon dioxide levels is an effect of natural global warming, not the cause of natural global warming. But what about Al Gore's famous hockey stick graph showing that global temperatures were basically constant for 1,000 years and did not start increasing until petrochemical were widely used from the 1930s? Al Gore should stick that hockey stick where the sun don't shine. That stupid graph is as much of a fraud as Al Gore is. Michael Mann, the scientist that fabricated that sham, purposefully left off two huge climatic cycles, the medieval warming period in the 11th century and the mini ice age in the 15th and 16th century, and also arbitrarily flattened out the data from the years 1000 to 1930 to give it that hockey stick shape. How do you know he did that? After years of trying to get hold of Dr. Men's data through freedom of information requests, a Canadian professor by the name of Stefan McIntyre finally got the raw data. After an intricate review, he proved that Dr. Men had purposefully modified and skewed the data in order to make the graph look like a hockey stick. 
Professor McIntyre later published his findings in a 2003 scientific peer review paper. Manipulating test data is the absolute worst thing a scientist can do. Why did he do that? Well, if you remove the two big climatic changes and then smooth out all the data between 1000 and 1930, it makes the graph look downright sinister and that was the goal of the graph. Mitch Ailman is a real jerk. Yes, you could call him the man behind the myth. Not only that, in the years 1000 to 1850 he used inaccurate tree ring data to roughly calculate temperatures and then switched to much more accurate meteorological temperature data from 1850 to the present. So the whole analysis and data is pretty much worthless and inaccurate. Well, what about ice core analysis? I thought this pretty much proved that carbon dioxide is causing global warming. No, ironically it proves just the opposite. Ice core studies prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that rising carbon dioxide is a lagging effect of global warming and definitely not a cause of global warming. How does the data prove that? Well, the ice core data conclusively shows that when a new natural global warming cycle first starts, carbon dioxide levels are still falling, and when a new global cooling cycle starts, carbon dioxide levels are still rising. So what? Well, it proves exactly what I have been saying, that rises and falls of carbon dioxide levels are a lagging effect of global temperature cycles, and not in any way whatsoever the cause of global warming. Do you understand the concept of cause and effect now? Yeah, yeah, I am starting to see what you are saying. But should we not try to cut carbon dioxide levels, because the EPA says carbon dioxide is a poisonous gas, right? Wrong again. Carbon dioxide is actually an essential plant food, and it would be better if carbon dioxide levels actually rose substantially from current levels. Why do you say that? Carbon dioxide and water are the two essential compounds needed for photosynthesis to take place. Scientific experiments show that the higher the concentration of carbon dioxide, the higher the crop yields and forest growth. Ironically, rising carbon dioxide levels have actually helped save millions from starvation. So rising carbon dioxide levels is a good thing, not a bad thing. But is not carbon dioxide dangerous at high concentrations? Well, at about 30,000 parts per million you may feel a bit lightheaded, but do you remember what current carbon dioxide levels are? Yes, about 365 parts per million, right? Correct, Amundo. Girl, you are starting to get it. Carbon dioxide levels would need to increase 10,000% to reach dangerous levels. Again, the EPA is full of crap on this one and a judge will soon tell them they can't limit carbon dioxide emissions. It is just crazy talk. Well, if carbon dioxide levels are not causing global warming, then what is? I will give you a hint. What is the hottest object in our solar system? Brad Pitt? No, I'm talking celestial, not terrestrial. Try again. The sun. Yep, and what else? Water vapor, right. You go girl, right again. Actually, without water vapor's greenhouse gas effect, it would be about 14 degrees colder than it is. Do you think that man can control the sun or water evaporation? No. Then why should we pretend that man has any effect whatsoever on either global warming or global cooling? Yes, I suppose it is a bit ridiculous, isn't it? What are some other factors that cause global temperatures to fluctuate? Well, there are quite a few factors like galactic cosmic radiation, which contributes to the formation of clouds and this also warms the Earth. An interesting phenomenon about cosmic radiation is that when solar activity decreases, solar winds also decrease, which enables more galactic cosmic rays to hit Earth and warm the planet by increasing cloud cover. That is why even with periods of decreased solar activity, there can still be some global warming. What are some other things? Well, there is volcanism, changes in ocean currents, shifting jet streams, fluctuations in the Earth's axial tilt, snow cover, ice extents, melting glaciers, El Nino, La Nina and all the interactions of all these factors contribute to global climate changes. Again, carbon dioxide has nothing to do with it. You mentioned glacier melts. Al Gore said that global warming is going to drown us all. Is this not a problem? Well, not so much. Following the rapid glacial melting period just after the end of the last ice age, glacial melting remained fairly constant for thousands of years and then started speeding up again around the 1820 following the mini ice age. 
Actually, we should all be grateful glaciers are still melting, because if they start growing again, it will mean we are heading into a new ice age, which would be catastrophic. If you can imagine it, 10,000 years ago, the United Nations building would have been under a mile of ice. Wow, the United Nations under a mile of ice. Sweet. Some satellite data and sunspot analysis is actually leading some scientists to predict another mini ice age is coming soon. The sun seemed to be starting a solar minimum and this could well explain why winters are starting to become so much more severe. I guess that may also be the reason why the government changed the name from global warming to global climate disruption. You are catching on girl. The hoaxers see what is coming and they want to try and keep the myth alive long enough to get worldwide cap and trade set up prior to global temperatures plummeting further. What is the reason to perpetrate the global warming hoax? Finally, the $10 trillion question. Part of the problem is that so few people really understand science. Most people probably think the periodic table refers to antique furniture. Anyway, the biggest motivation to keep this hoax alive is money. The climate scientist and the universities they work for receive millions of dollars for bogus global warming research, alternative energy companies are getting millions in subsidies and research funds, the farmers are getting millions in ethanol crop subsidies, Wall Street stands to make trillions of dollars in carbon credit trading, governments get trillions in carbon taxes, the United Nations will receive trillions in carbon credit money to be redistributed to third world countries, the liberal media is all for it because the hoax fits perfectly with their goal for global socialism and global wealth distribution, the environmental groups like it because cap and trade will destroy industrial production and thereby lowering pollution. It is very depressing that so much money is being wasted for no reason. I cannot argue with that. The biggest hoax in human history. It took the Piltdown Man hoax 40 years before the public and scientist figured out the hoax was based on the jawbone of an orangutan. I hope it does not take 40 years to find out the global warming hoax was based on the jawbones of a bunch of asses.